So uh, BigQuery is is in fact a competitor to the um, to to AWS Redshift, and really there's some pros and cons of both. One of the things I really like about BigQuery here is that it will actually allow you to do machine learning inside of their system. And, and so I'm gonna go ahead and open up my GCP account here and go to a console, and I'm gonna just walk through this, this demo. So uh, in this particular demo, what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply k-means clustering in SQL, and then we're also, we'll grab it and put it into their B BI tool, which is called um, Data Studio. So this data set is, already hosted inside of the uh, Google BigQuery system, which is also a huge advantage, uh, is that they have tons of public data sets in here. So uh, what, what I'm gonna do first here is I'm gonna go ahead and create a project. So uh, I'll kind of make this a little bit bigger, and then I will say uh, new project, and we'll just call this um, Big BigQuery demo, and I'll put, uh, March 7th, so I know I can delete it later. Okay, this will take just a second. <clears throat> and then the first thing that we'll need to do once this thing's uh, created is enable, so, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that, select this, um, this project, there we go. And then I'm also gonna need to uh, enable the um, BigQuery API. Okay, so this will be BigQuery demo. We'll go ahead and do that. And, and then this, we don't need the credentials. This would only be if you were going to use your Cloud Shell account and query it. But um, I'm gonna go again back here and I can get, start, get started. So first up, what I'll do is, um, is I'm going to create the data set. So I'm gonna go to this uh, BigQuery UI here and I will go to the resources section. Uh, so let's see here, it's going to be under resources. You see this? So just as a FYI with BigQuery, one of the things that's really cool about it <clears throat> is that they have this thing called public data. And if you scroll through here, there's a ton of projects that are really cool projects like you know, baseball data, you know, crime data, um, census data, all kinds of stuff, you know, and this is really a, a problem people always are looking for is how do I analyze big data for real? Well, this is one way you could do that because you don't have to handle importing this data, it's already there for you. So for example, like if we looked at um, GitHub or something like that, you know, I could I could go through here and, you know, look at the commits or something and, and qu click on query the table and then I could say select star from uh, from this data and then run a, a, a SQL query and just start getting access to it. And then additional, additionally to that, one of the things that you can do is you also can um, click this button and pump it into their BI tool uh, immediately as well. So again, you know, many students are looking for data sets. This is a great way to do it, right? And you can start you know, visualizing the data and share, and you can share it with other people as well. So if you if you save this thing, um, and I and if I wanted to share it with you, I could just click on share, and then uh, essentially say, you know, anyone, um, in, in, anyone with a link to this, you can 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 use this report. So the workflow is really smooth to share stuff. You also can um, download it too. So if I say click, I can actually. Um, put it in Google Drive or local. And you can see here, I could just say, oh, I wanna look at that data later and, and, and move it up. So th that's just kind of a, a, like a side note about why BigQuery is so big. So the next thing I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through this project here. So what I will do is I will say, um, a create data set, uh, we'll go to resources, click create data set. So um, I think it would be under, Let's see here, in resources, click your project name. And let's see, let's find our project name. Where is our project name here? BigQuery, yeah, here we go. And then 
what we want to do is say create data set. And for the data set ID, we'll put in BigQuery ML tutorial. There we go. Here we go. And then I'll say create data set. And then for the location, this is a big one, is because their data is in European Union, um, I need to make sure that I set that to Europe. And actually, I, I screwed that up, so I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to redo it again because this could cause problems. Because I'm going to copy the data from the publicly available data into my data set. So we'll go ahead and say delete. OK, so I'm going to go back here again, say create data set. I'm going to change this to European Union, and then I'm going to paste in BigQuery ML, and then I'm going to do it again. OK, so now that that's good, I'm going to examine the data. So we're just going to do some descriptive statistics, right? So remember, the data science workflow is ingestion is phase one, uh, exploratory data analysis, that's phase two, modeling, phase three, and then conclusion. So we're now, we've already ingested the data. So now we need to uh, examine the data. So do some exploratory data analysis. So I'm going to I'm going to copy through this query data. I'm just going to put copy and you can see it's a big SQL statement that does a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to um, paste this query in. And, and I, I can also if I want to, I think I can just say format it and it'll like kind of clean it up as well and make my SQL a little bit fancier. Um, so Let's go ahead and run this, and and you can see like how much data it's. Uh oh. So I'm having I'm having some problem. My, I guess I I've exceeded my my quota here. So what I could do is I can I think I can click on upgrade. Let's let's see, and I can go to I have an account that's got a ton of credits, and then uh, the enable billing. So if you need to enable billing on additional projects, let's see if my other, let's see if I can put it on here. There we go. Nope. So the, we, we have a little bit of a UI issue with Google, which I have an easy workaround. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of this project and I'm going to go to a project that I, that, I, that does have billing capabilities. And so what I will do is I will um, uh, go through here, and you can see this is a, a previous B BigQuery ML. Um, I'm just going to use this one because I, it, it was working previously. Uh, so, so because I have so many accounts, it just had a little bit of an issue. So we'll just kind of like a cooking show, bring out the, the next phase of the cooking show. So next up, what I'm going to do is um, we'll, we'll just run that same query again. So I will um, go through here and copy this, copy this and uh, paste it. And so the again, the big the big takeaway here is that it shows you um, how much data that you're actually processing and it will show you the results. And we can see here that the dates, the, the data is pretty cool. We have, you know, station name, duration, number of trips, distance from the city cluster, right? And so again, I could I could actually take this data if I wanted to, and I could also start playing around with it in big data in Data Studio, which is an interesting, you know, idea. And I believe there's like a, there's an auto charting, there's a bunch of different auto charts here um, that, and you can add different things and add more data like, you know, uh, show this in there. Here we go. Show. Anyway, you can, you can, you can play around, you can play around with these station name, add, add more dimensions to, to your data and, then add different kinds of charts and visualizations and play around with it. So next up here, let's go to um, doing the k-means clustering. So if we scroll down here, the, the big thing that you, to be aware of is that you, again, you can do um, machine learning directly inside of BigQuery. So if I just copy this, I can do another, um, another SQL query. So I'm going to, make this thing a little bit smaller let's see uh hide maybe go full screen there we go exit full screen i had to kind of mess things up a little bit here so i'm going to paste this in and, and what this is going to do is it says um 
create a k-means clustering model with four clusters and you can see the data it, 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 there's some things that where I where I subset the data and I look for specific you know weekend data and timestamps and everything and then I, I select the average duration and the count and the ma maximum distance um, so once I run this thing what it, what it will do is it'll in SQL it'll train a k-means clustering model for me and in fact the next step up here is when it's done is I should be able to click on the evaluations tab and it will show me the the data of uh, basically the metrics around the k-means clustering project so it's I don't think this will take too long but while this is running what's powerful about this is is that in one shot you can dump your data into this this data warehouse query it and also do train your machine learning model on it without having to bring it back into scikit-learn or you know tensorflow or some other system you can just immediately start getting results so from a speed and productivity standpoint there's a lot to like about the you know google bigquery system so you can see here it's training so it's training our, our k-means clustering model <clears throat> And also, the, the cool thing about this is that k-means clustering is a very expensive algorithm. And in, in, an R, and in our case here, we we're able to get, uh, a t you know, basically run it at scale. So here's the execution details. You can see that um, the pre-processing time took 12 seconds. It took 50 seconds to train and then uh, 4.3 seconds to evaluate. Here's our, our training loss. You can see how it, it went through here. There's a whole diagram. Here's the duration, the duration. And I believe as well that there is um, some more metrics here. Let's see here. You go to, to get to the metrics around, um, let's see here. So, and click on the training tab. So where is that training tab here? Um, Oh, go to model. So if we click on go to model, then you can click on training and I'll, and yeah, it has all this information about it. Uh, evaluation, it shows us metrics like mean squared error distance. It, it even shows us the features of each of the clusters. So we can see that cluster one, there's 247 of them. Cluster two, there's um, 643. Uh, and Basically, from here, that's 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 essentially you know things uh, are 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 k-means clustering in a nutshell. And so then, one of the things we could do is we can now use it to do a prediction. So why don't we um, identify every cluster that has the word um, Kennington in it and identify where that cluster lives? So let's go ahead and copy this. We'll go to the next one here. And we'll compose a new query, and we'll and we'll paste this in. And what, what what this will do is now that we've trained the model, we can actually say, hey, where where of the the clusters that are available, uh, of the the stations that match the word Kennington, why don't we find out which clusters are they're in, right? And you can see here's the results. And now I can also save this or export this this. Um, result here to data studio and then we could create some kind of fancy data visualization so how would you do that we could add some more dimensions here so let's add the cluster right and then maybe add the um, the distance from the city center and maybe like the the duration here right and then I could change the visualization to be like a heat map or something like that or some other kind of visualization I don't know which one in particular, maybe, but anyway, you could you could start, and I, maybe under metric, instead of the record count, I could add the centroid maybe. There we go. So so now we can see that, you know, you've got a, um, you know, kind of the counts of, of um, you know, or the, you, you could play around with it basically and, and, and create a cool visualization. I don't know if that's exactly the, the metric we want, but from here, um, yeah, actually instead of the centroid ID, probably what we would do is say the distance, 
there we go. So so we could see that um, you know cluster you know cluster three has like maybe really long trips or something like that. And anyway, you 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 could play around for for days on that. So we can save this, and then if I want to share this um, this report with somebody, maybe this is my management team. You know, really quickly, I can go here, and then and then and then share that add to the report and and share share my data to a report great look 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 it took me only 30 minutes and i was able to do k-means clustering figure out which clusters these things were assigned to uh, and then and then create a report so that's that's really in a nutshell the power of something like big big query uh, is that the speed that you can actually do real world machine learning and then turn it into a bi tool